Hey guys, hope all of you are well. Welcome to your channel. And in this video, we are going to discuss what, why, what is the importance of ancient India for your UPSC syllabus, especially for the art and culture section. The one thing you have to keep in mind that many of the students tend to skip this ancient India part for art and culture. They think that they are, uh, there is very last question asked in art and culture. Uh, art and culture from this particular part ancient India. Let keep apart the exam perspective uh, uh, from this part. Right. Do not think about the exam perspective. Right. We are not uh, talking about the exam perspective here, but the importance of ancient India for your syllabus, not for GS1, even GS1, 2, 3, 4, up to your interview. It has so much immense importance of ancient India that you not only for the exam perspective, but you have to read this section at anyhow. So here is I have gathered some points why you have not to skip this ancient India. First thing is that this part is the cradle of all art and culture, all art and culture aspects. There are main, the, if you, if I say about the major trends of art, art and uh, culture like paintings, architect, architecture, sculpture and literature, paintings, architecture, sculpture and literature this four major major trends which you have to read again and again in medieval medieval india and modern india which you will read this about these four trends these major four trends of art and art culture aspects have gained their root in ancient india right like uh, for example cave cave paintings uh, in architecture, temple uh, and stupa, in sculpture, Buddhist, Harappa, Gupta, Moira, and whatever maybe, any literature, Vedic, Gupta, and whatever it might be. Right, these four major trends of art and uh, culture have derived their roots from ancient India, and that is why ancient India bears bears immense importance for not only for your syllabus but as a person. The second thing is that this part, ancient India, part of the ancient India provides basic understanding because this is the root of each and every art and culture aspect. That is why if you do not read this uh, thoroughly, then you will not develop a uh, basic understanding in later part. Right. For example, cave temple. How from the uh, the initiation of cave temple turns into freestanding temple in later phases. To understand this uh, intricacy, you have to know that in what situation cave temple has been initiated in ancient India. Right, in that way, how trend of sculpture is determined by contemporary religion, popular beliefs, etc. If you directly jumped to the sculpture part in medieval India, then you will probably, you will find it difficult to understand ki what is the trend of uh, society, how society influence sculpture, right? How religion influences sculpture. But if you read it thoroughly, the, thoroughly from the uh, ancient India part, then you will uh, develop a basic understanding. Then how, what are the uh, influences of, uh, what are the influences that have made a particular kind of sculpture, right? In that way, it depicts the picture of society and religion through the medium of art. Ancient India is not an ancient India in terms of art and architecture. It gives a picture of society and religion through the medium of art and architecture. That means the art and architecture part of ancient India not only tells about the art and architecture, it has directly it is directly or indirectly gives us information about the contemporary society. For example, take temple, uh, temple architecture. Right here, uh, through this part of through this particular aspect of temple architecture, you will know many other aspects. For example, growth of Brahmanism. How growth of Brahmanism has contributed here? Interlinking social structure, patronism, state virtues religion. This type of interlayer uh, aspects of society and religion uh, will be able to know if you uh, read this particular architecture. 
right so art in ancient art and culture in ancient india is a medium to know the society the contemporary society and religion etc and above all i am telling you that whether questions come or not whether you will find questions in exam or not from this particular part but it is utmost important up to your interview because e this part is the essence and ethos of an indian what and what does ethos and essence of an indian means that means all ethos and essence of an indian personality as an indian what we are as an indian what you are as an indian what i am what our mindset is how we are brought up what values we have cherished in our heart all these things are determined by the aspects of ancient india up to the largest extent that means the values the values and culture the inheritance which we have as an indian are much more determined by the aspects by the perspectives of ancient india that is why i have told you not only from the exam perspective not only from the paper of gs1 as an indian even including four gs paper and as a building up of the personality this if you read thoroughly this part of art and culture not only art and culture the whole part of uh, ancient india in terms of art architecture sculpture society and religion then you will build a strong grip up as an indian right that's why do not never skip up this part right read this thoroughly with basic understanding step by step from period to period right hope this video has helped you a lot i'll come again with another video till then take care and bye bye